All right, everyone, thanks for coming out for kind of a different type of video or lecture in quantitative methods. This is going to posit a uh, pretty radical idea that goes against what a lot of statisticians say, and that's quantitative methods can answer every question. Of course, it cannot. The one problem, although there's many, with statistics is that many people who do statistics thinks statistics is the end all. Now, statistics are very important, big data science, et cetera, which we're going to learn. We're going to use, as I said before, our statistical environment in our studio, the user-friendly interface, although I heard it's changing its name, our studio. Uh, but, um, and, you know, we're going to do a lot of big data, and we're actually going to run R in our studio, and we're going to do um, a lot of stuff. But for one of the first lectures... I want to make it clear, statistics is not the end all. There's a lot of research questions that you can use with what we call qualitative methods, and we will get into that, and what we also call interpretive methods. Uh, one of the reasons why I gave you that Edward Bernay video is to show you how we can perpetuate and legitimize things. This is what you call interpretive methods. It's basically how we socially construct the world. So by uh, having women, uh, uh, smoke, or I'm trying to get them to smoke, they linked the idea of smoking to the elite and to feminism and to patriotism, etc. Edward Bernay was a great propagandist. So that's not a quantitative method. That's an interpretive method. You study propaganda, discourse, etc. And that doesn't always fit in the quantitative, more positivist, that is cause and effect, which we're going to do, uh, framework. So that's very important to understand. So, you know, uh, Edward Bernay was brilliant. He did work for the government, although in an evil way to convince people like, for example, Hakabar Benz of Guatemala was a communist, right? This is what propagandists do. Uh, there's a great documentary, Lee Atwater, uh, the boogeyman Lee Atwater story, where it shows how Lee Atwater used imagery and other things to take down a man named called Mike Dukakis and to perpetuate and legitimize the idea of the Southern strategy of racism, the Willie Horton ad, et cetera. So a lot of questions cannot be dealt with with statistics. You know, when in the 2016 election, Trump was wearing the big coal hat and came out and said, oh, look at me. I'm like you, West Virginia. I mean, that's interpretive methods. He's selling himself in this propagandistic way. And all politicians are somewhat propagandistic, like he's one of them, polls coming back, etc. I mean, it was a very astute move going through all these Rust Belt states. But he did it with this, this discourse, this idea like, I'm one of you. Well, of course, he's not. He's one of the elite and would never invite them <laughs> to his Margo Lago place, whatever you call it, in Florida. But the fact of the matter is he was, you know, selling his image of this, you know, great uh, supporter of coal. That's interpretive methods. And I lived in Nicaragua. That's the poorest country in Latin America after IT, Haiti. And it was very interesting because it had a revolution. And what you see behind me, I took it in Nicaragua and I lived there. That's a man named Augusto Sandino. And he was basically a just a person, right, who happened to, in the 1920s, 30s, fight against the United States forces, imperialism, um, in his country. And for years and years and years after he was killed by a man named Samosa, who he supported the Samosa dynasty until it was overthrown in 1979, he was always considered a bandit, right? A, a terrorist, a, 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 just a bad person who fought the United States. But when the Sandinistas, that was a political movement, overthrew Samosa in 1979, that was the brutal dictator we were supporting, they renamed him, that is Augusto Sandino, not as a bandit and terrorist, but now he becomes a hero. So Sandino, this now hero, which you see his imagery all over the country. This one happens to be at La Uca, the Universidad Centroamericana, the, the University of Central America where I work. It's interesting that, you know, he is considered a hero. In fact, they rename Managua Airport, Managua is the capital, to Sandino Airport. So, you know, it's interesting how history kind of changes that, the imagery, 
how we attach certain connotations. So if you think about it, you know, he was considered a bandit, but with the revolution of 1979 in Nicaragua, they rebranded him a hero, and now he's considered a hero in Nicaragua. So it's interesting, these types of um, methods that statistics is not the only method. In fact, when you look at Sandino, it's the same thing with our, if you're from the United States, our forefathers and mothers. The people of Great Britain weren't sitting around during the Revolutionary War. Hey, you know, look at the heroes. They were calling them bandits, terrorists, etc. Look at they tar and feather a poor tax collector. They're animals. You know what I mean? So, but but because we won the revolution woo-hoo, against the British, Thank you. Uh, we basically, you know, they became name them as heroes, right? The founding fathers. Such a, what happens if they had lost? They would not go down in history as heroes, but as bandits and terrorists until other people come and rename them. They basically give them a different identity, different meaning, etc. Same thing with Muhammad Ali a long time ago, not before my time. Muhammad Ali was considered, you know, not a good person. Now he's considered a hero. So you see the same thing. They analyze movies, look at Spider-Man, how that like perpetuate, legitimize some kind of ideas, uh, propaganda, people, discourse. You know, you see right now with the Ukrainian uh, invasion, the invasion of the Ukraine, Russia's trying to, you know, say, well, this is denazification, et cetera, use propaganda for it, just like we use propaganda for a lot of our invasions of Latin America. So this is another type of method, more interpretive methods, where we study how the world is socially constructed and how meaning, identity, and legitimacy become you know, attached to certain things. So again, Sandino for the longest time was a bandit and then boom, now he's considered a hero. So the facts are actually malleable. What is a terrorist? Well, a terrorist depends on where you sit, right? And it's very interesting, a lot of these um, um, issues. So I want to start with this in quantitative methods because although it might seem like a weird place to start, because it basically is saying, quant- I- I'm saying quantitative methods are important, right? We're going to be doing a lot of data science, dependent, independent variables, you know, regression analysis, et cetera. And you're going to run stuff yourself. Not yet, but, you know, we're going to have some quizzes, make sure you understand what's going on in the class and start running um, our, our studio. So with that said, though, there are different ways to see the world. And I remember I was watching one video uh, and uh, for uh, this is statistics, which is a really good website that that you're going to see. But one person said, you know, you can answer any question with statistics statistics. That's tough to say. And especially when you've been drinking Russian vodka. I'm kidding. It's only water. But basically, the idea is, you know, oh, we can answer any question with statistics. It is not true. And statisticians have become a little arrogant in the last years with all this kind of big data. But sometimes big data is very biased. Like if you're coding, and we're going to get into what coding is, for terrorism, you're going to code terrorism a different way than another country would, right? You know, because we're going to see certain terrorists like uh, Sandino, he's a terrorist, right? In fact, a friend of mine, Dora Maria Tellez, who uh, participated in the Sandinista revolution, I wasn't in the country during that time, in like 1978, she helped overthrow the Congress of Somoza and take people hostage, and she was considered a terrorist by the U.S. government, that is Dora Maria Tellez, and she basically did not get her visa, her visa was like denied or something. She's one of the only women in, in history, U.S. history, to be denied a visa for terrorism. And she was going to she was just going to come for a conference. So what this is, is that but here in Nicaragua, I'd walk around with her and she's a hero. So she's a terrorist in the United States, but a hero in her own country because she overthrew a brutal dictator. It just so happens that dictator was being supported by the United States of America during the Cold War. So this is very, very important to kind of understand is that when we get into statistics, statistics is not the only way to see the world, right? Uh, Even though statistics... It's it's vitally important, vitally important. I mean, obviously, I, I um, you know I study statistics, I do statistics, and advanced statistics because our studio is the avant garde. Sometimes people use Python. We're not going to get too much into that now, but we are going to do a little GIS leaflet package and other things. But this is a very important place to start with any kind of quantitative research or statistics class. It's that statistics are important, but they're not the end all. But they are a lot of fun. 
Uh, they can be very socially uh, 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 justice oriented uh, to help the world, uh, to glean all that data out there. So we're going to have a lot of fun in this class. We're going to learn a lot. But I did want to begin with the fact that there are many different ways to see the world. So I want to thank you for listening and to everyone out there. I hope everyone's staying safe and uh, take care.